This is a SOX equipped DCC decoder loco. It's got a Digitrax uh, 126 decoder in it and it's got a AAA battery car backing it up behind it. It's powered up and on and we can control it with uh, an iPhone Wi-Fi uh, uh, throttle which I've got uh, with me. So let's start her up. We'll turn the light on. There that goes. And then we'll bring her forward and see how she rolls. It's pretty smooth. Of course there's no tr power coming from the track. And uh, we can see it go all the way up to the, the bumper that I've got. And the bumper in fact is a jumper across the track to demonstrate that there's no power in the track. It's actually shorted out. So the loco is entirely controlled via Wi-Fi with the battery source that it's carrying. We can uh, back it up a little bit now. Stop it there. And uh, we can control it all from the Wi-Fi throttle. Uh, it's carrying its own power in the uh, battery car. Uh, there's a tiny little switch. I can bring it forward again and uh, show you. Let's see, go forward, not backwards. And uh, you can see the door is open there. And I'll try and zoom in on the, uh, the door. I can here and you can see the the red slide switch uh, in the door opening that it turns the power on and off to the uh, socks there's eight AAA batteries in there that give you 12 volts there's a small jumper that you can barely make out between the tender and the car I left uh, one of them red so you can pick it up and uh, with a, a, a connector that you can disconnect between the battery car and the tender. And everything is in the tender, including the, the uh, Digitrax DCC decoder and the SOX module. And we'll open it up and I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, so I've uh, stopped the train, obviously, and uh, taken off the shells and disconnected everything. Uh, the uh, locomotive in this particular case, since the decoder is in the tender, is essentially unmodified, although I did put an LED in for the uh, headlight instead of the original incandescent lamp, so uh, that's about the only modification to the locomotive. You can see the decoder uh, right here. Uh, that's the Digitrax decoder. It simply has a piece of tape wrapped around it to hold the additional leads coming out of it. In the tender, you can see the ESP01 module that does all the Wi-Fi work back there. And that's tucked up inside the tender. And here's the SOX module right here. This, this little board uh, that uh, has the uh, Teensy LC that's connected with it. Uh, this is just the 8-pin plug adapter that the original tender had. There's no other modifications to it. Take the Digitrax decoder, plug it into the adapter. I did remove the uh, uh, weight that was in the tender uh, to give me a little bit more room. Here's the entire SOX module here. Okay, and from the SOX module there's two connections. One is out to the battery car to get the 12 volts uh, for the uh, the power for both the, uh, the motor and also for powering the SOX module and the 3.3 volts necessary for uh, the, um, uh, the ESP-01S Wi-Fi module. So that's going to a connector that I'll show you in a second in the battery car. And the other connection is the uh, Keep Alive that would normally be connected right here to the Digitrax decoder and that simply runs to uh, 
the direct connection to the battery car. The other connection that's made is the rail connection, A and B rail connection to the DCC decoder that would normally be connected through the, the uh, eight pin plug. That's what the other connection for the two pins from the uh, DCC output of the SOX module, they go uh, and connect directly to the rail inputs of the decoder. So there's actually only two connections to the SOX module, the power for 12 volts and the uh, uh, rail connection to the DCC decoder. The control is all coming in through Wi-Fi, there's no uh, a wired connection for that. You also have the pass-through of the wire connection from the battery car that goes directly into uh, the small one millimeter uh, JST connector that is where typically Digitrax allows you to plug in a Keep Alive. And that's it. There's no other modifications uh, uh, in it. The wiring that's here uh, allows me to, instead of attach the ESP01 module to the bottom, which would be right here actually, of the uh, SOX module, I run the wires instead uh, so I can position the ESP01 Wi-Fi module at a distance from uh, this, the actual SOX module itself. So that's why those wires are there. Um, here is the battery car. You can see I'm just using alkaline AAA batteries. Uh, here's the switch which is still on, which I can turn off. Um, the switch uh, turns on and off all the power. So now there's no power being used anywhere, no power being sent anywhere. Um, and the connections are simply taking all the batteries and putting them in series. The battery connectors are pretty simple. Uh, there's simply two uh, uh, AAA battery open uh, uh, sockets or uh, holders, battery holders. They're all wired in series to give me the 12 volt supply that I need to power everything controlled again by the switch in the middle and I'm going to maneuver this I hope so that you can see it you can barely see that there's a three pin connector here that's right here and it's three pins because no matter which way I plug the three pin plug into it it's going to always work power is in the middle that's tw plus 12 volts and ground or minus 12 volts are on the outside. So if, even if I reverse the connector, it would still work. And again, what that connector looks like is this right here. That's the connector. So there's only two pins required uh, and it's symmetric, so you can plug it in either direction. Uh, the battery car simply was made to simply hold the batteries in place. I can pull either one of these out and replace the batteries makes it really easy. The shell, which was an Atherin uh, boxcar, simply slides over and it's a friction fit to hold it. So there's, there's nothing else particularly strange about it. It's pretty straightforward. And the three comprise the entire uh, operating uh, SOX DCC equipped locomotive. All of the features for DCC control are still enabled uh, with the Digitrax decoder. So if you had set it up for consisting, it's still there. If you set it up for a speed table, it's still there. If you set it up for momentum, it's still there. It doesn't change anything in the decoder. Anything that can be sent through the Wi-Fi throttle uh, server and channel to the uh, SOX module will be passed on to the decoder. There's no modification of, of that. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you can see that it's actually a uh, pretty small little module. I moved the decoder out of the way. Maybe I could give you a better, better picture of it. That's the SOX module that's right there. It's about 2.3 something inches long and about uh, 3 quarters of an inch wide. It's kind of like the size of a, of a uh, I would call a large decoder. Uh, there are a lot smaller decoders than that now but it carries everything necessary to give you direct Wi-Fi control of whatever DCC decoder it's plugged into. Uh, 
and uh, the power source, the 12 volt power source in this case, is coming from just these batteries. There's nothing else involved. But there are variations in batteries, there are variations in charging the batteries, maybe from the rail, and there are variations as well of pickup from the rail, uh, much like you would get for either DC or DCC power, except that the only thing that you uh, have any interest in is just picking it, picking it up and providing uh, 12 volt DC uh, power to the SOX module. And that's it. So you could conceivably build a battery car, and I think in, in another uh, uh, article I'll talk about uh, the variations on battery cars, but you could even build a battery car that uh, is charged from the rails, one that would accept either DCC, DC, or AC power from the rails if it's available, uh, kind of like an overgrown uh, uh, keep alive. Uh, to whatever you, you're going to use, you're going to provide DC in some form to the SOX module, and that'll give you the power that you need. It all works the same way. So I hope you enjoyed it.